Hi, this is Randy Randall of No Age and host of the podcast Hyphen It with Randy Randall. I want to welcome our newest sponsor of the show, DistroKid. DistroKid helps musicians get their music on all the major streaming platforms and artists keep 100% of their royalties. Hyphenate listeners get 30% off at distrokid.com backslash VIP backslash hyphenate. Again, that's distrokid.com backslash VIP backslash H-Y-P-H-E-N-A-T-E. Go get your music streaming everywhere now. Hey, what's happening? I just wanted to come to you before this halftime episode kicks off and let you know that I am playing a show in Southern California this Friday, uh, October 18th. I will be playing at Healing Force of the Universe Records in Pasadena on Walnut Street, and I'll be doing a solo ambient set, and uh, Dustin Wong will also be playing and so well uh, MRK you don't want to miss this you can get uh, tickets at the link in my Instagram at Randy S. Randall I have links on there it says uh, just for a moment I think is what they're calling the, the show but it's presented by Insonic Dreams and uh, Sherpa Management and uh, yeah it's going to be an awesome cool night of experimental guitar and noise bashing in Pasadena this Friday if you're interested in that kind of thing uh, I'm interested in that kind of thing I'm going to be there I think it's going to be a lot of fun uh, I play um i don't know what time it starts i think we're like saying seven o'clock uh it's a 21 plus event um it's advance is 12 dollars. advanced 14 dollars at the door it's gonna be a really fun night so that's uh this friday october 18th um come trip out have a spooky good guitar uh freak out evening uh grab tickets in my link in my instagram at randy s randall and um yeah, it'll be super fun. You don't want to miss uh, Dustin Wong either. He's incredible. I've known him for years, and he really creates a wall of sound. He's he's awesome. It's going to be a really fun night. So go grab your tickets, and now on to the Hyphenate Show. What's happening? Thank you so much for tuning in to Hyphenate Halftime for this Monday, October 14th. I'm here, as always, with my my ghoul host, Mr. Aaron Farley. How is your spooky season going? We're halfway through it. Where are the spooks <laughs> at? The frights, the chills, the thrills. I thought it was over. No. no I went to Home Depot I... that one time, and then that was it. Oh, now it's all Christmas decorations? The, the <laughs> Unfortunately. Already. Thanksgiving. Yeah. No. You always forget about Thanksgiving. All you Halloween people. They get you. I saw one. Thanksgiving already... is the real holiday. <laughs> The I saw one Halloween that was, they, stealing they, from. <laughs> they were doing uh, Fourth of July sales up already. I mean, they're they're onto the next one. They're so far down the rabbit hole. <laughs> they're already like they actually. It's gone all the way around, and they're doing sales for 2025 holiday. Yeah, or uh, Halloween. Uh, Halloween. Yeah. That's where we're at. Yeah, that's not even stuff that hasn't even come out this year. This is all pre-orders for next year. Yeah, it's pre-orders for next year. Oh um, we're already buying things for for 2025. Wow. I feel That's so bad. Right. Our kids love seeing Halloween decorations. Like, where's all of our Halloween decorations? And we have like a few things around the house. And like Shannon yeah. <coughs> likes to put up a few things here and there. But it's really, you know, we just we we had we went crazy for Christmas, and yeah. then just you just get burned every year. Like, well, no one's looking at these. We don't. The kids yeah. don't care about these. Like after the first, you know, it takes three hours to set everything up, and then the kids look for about you know three seconds. Yeah, and then and then no one ever looks at them again. Like, it's also for people who have a lot of storage. Right. Because exactly. I don't know where you put any of that stuff. Like we, we have a garage. I mean, I'm also a hoarder, so I have oh, way yeah, too much. I don't throw anything out. And uh, so our garage is basically just a dumping zone Archive. with a, like a couple walkways through the middle, <laughs> a bunch of stuff we never use. It's perfect. Like I was, I really was thinking like if you, if just one day someone took the garage away and, and said, hey, make an inventory of what was in there so we can replace it. I'd remember like 14 things. There's some maybe. cables for that old computer. Yeah, like old some hard tools. Drive you used to use. Yeah. I mean, that, I, use, I use tools. There's some tools I use. But then I definitely put, you know, we have the rafters. And so I built some little shelves and put stuff up on the rafters. And then I realized, I'm like, well, I, when have I grabbed? It's been like three years. I haven't grabbed anything from up there. I guess we put like our snowboards up there during the off season. But other than that, like the snowboards just sit on these boxes that are in bins. Yeah. And like, are those bins and boxes just full of stuff just to hold 
So the snowboards don't fall through the rafters? I think so, yes. maybe. Well, I yeah, I have a bunch of stuff like that. There's things I've definitely said like, oh, I want to show these to the kids or I want to give these to the kids when they're old enough or when they're of a certain age. Yeah. And I think some of those things, the, the time has come and gone for the kids. Like, oh, the, you know, when I have little kids, I'd love to show them this picture of something I yeah. did when I was a little kid. And now they're too old. And I'm like, why? But I'm still holding on to these things of like, what was the final end game? I think when I was, you know, in my 20s, I was like, well, I can't lose this thing, this box of weird drawings I made or poetry I wrote as a kid. Like, this will be interesting to show my kids. Yeah. It's not, it's new. I have news flash for my, my 20 year old self. No, it's not interesting to show your kids. Like, the- <laughs> your kids don't care what you did. The thing they're like, they're going to care so much. It's like, look at this thing I did. And they're like, can I play Fortnite? Yeah. No. <laughs> I preserved my innocence, my childhood. I carried this through, you know, all of my twenties and thirties and into this house that we made for you guys. And now I can share. I'm like also a kid with you, my kids. Yeah. No, you're, no, you're not. You're old. No, your dad, dad, you're old. You don't even know how old you look at through my eyes. <laughs> like you old. remember how old your dad looked? Yep. Oh, yeah. That's how old you look to me. Yep. Weirdo. And, just, and I yell at them and tell them to go to their room. Yeah. Like, Why are you saying bro to me? <laughs> you're too old for that. Don't do oh, that. Amazing. Is bro, is bro still a thing? Is bro, bro? It's, well, it's back. Bro, so bro came back. It was, I thought it was gone. It seemed like but, time. Well, you know, you know who brought it back? Oh, okay. Well, I have a Tell bee me. in the studio, so we'll, okay. I'll let you know. If I'm swatting a lot. Okay. Um, well, if, if I'm coughing a lot, my cold that I've been oh. plaguing me to death last on the, the last episode is now just turned into a chest cold. So I'm just oh, coughing. It's the worst. Yeah. Everybody's sick all the time now. Oh yeah. That's yeah. It's it crazy. Um, but uh, what was I talking about? Oh, bro. bro, bro. So I think I was actually list- I I was I went through this in my head just the other day for whatever reason. So I remember listening to interviews. I listened to a lot of like hip hop interviews, mm-hmm. and Kanye started saying "bro." Oh no, bro. Blah blah blah. And I was like, oh no. Is, is bro going to be a thing? This is the thing, yeah. Because bro really was always like, you know, kind of a jock, jock. like bro, and it was very like deep Meathead. and like bro, you don't even know, bro, yeah. right? And then all of a sudden, Kanye started saying it, and then all of a sudden, all the other rappers, and then bro, just became a thing on like rap podcasts and interview shows. And I'm like, oh, it's it hilarious. can't happen. Well, I like bruh. And now bro or, or bruh, 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 bruh. Yep. is, it's just, it's I mean, just I guess now. it's Probably like lexicon. dude. Everyone away. Yeah. Yeah. It's like dude or whatever, but now it's everyone. So it's not, so it's, it's permeated. It's completely permeated any kind of young culture. Bruh. But now as a joke, multiple times in school, I just say, bro. And then the kids look at me, and then the kids go, don't you say that. You know the that. code? Oh, no. no! Don't say that. And I'm like, you don't get to tell me what to do. <laughs> if you guys get to say or it, like, I can say it. Yeah. Or like, I've been saying bro for years, bro. <laughs> That's my bro. That's not your I, bro. I broed before you were maybe, even a, a bro. Yeah, oh. maybe you have a bro, oh but God. I still get bro. You gotta show them um, uh, um, twins, the Danny DeVito Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. They have that great song. Tonight is your night, bro. Is your night, oh bro? My God. It's your night, bro. Bro. I feel like there's a lot of bros in twins. There must be. A, there's got to be like a meme about that too, right? Yes. I look I'm it sure. up. I hope. I'll find it. I'll yeah. find the short T- version. But I love that little song. Tonight is your night, bro. Oh my God! That's I so forgot about that. that. Twins. Oh, yeah. Twins. Oh yeah, it's a great. Isn't one. isn't there a st- a, like a very famous story that 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 movie was literally pitched exactly that way but just like someone needed they're like oh we're thinking like two twins that look different like maybe arnold schwarzenegger and danny devito and they're but they're twins and so i was know. like oh my that god great. that's genius i'd watch that yeah exactly yep and here's your funding yeah and you're good you're green i feel like there's a story that it was almost that quick and then people went oh man okay now we gotta make this movie can we really do this yeah i'm all i also could be completely it sounds Making right. that up in line. I've heard they wanted to do a third one with uh, Eddie Murphy as the triplet, as the missing. There was actually there was one more. There was one more baby in there too that came out. Is it, what it was, was the Murphy. movie that I was just watching a clip from? Uh, what was it? Not Boomerang. 
The one where he's the nerd and he becomes like a really oh, famous. Blowf- Blowfinger? No, Blow. No, uh, Bowfinger. Bowfinger, yes. Oh, it's great. That was great. That's hilarious. Oh, my God. With and Steve I Martin. watched. So yep. And I watched the, the one where he's he's getting cast and oh. Steve Martin's the oh, casting geez. director. He's got the, he's got the teeth. He goes, so, Do you think oh, you can show oh. your buttocks? Or whatever, oh, and he's like, yeah. "Oh God, oh, oh, oh. he's such a good character oh. for him." Oh my God, it's. But also, when you see, like, that's another one. When you oh. saw that pitch, you're like, "Well, Eddie Murphy's done." You know, it's just like it looked like the worst idea ever and the worst character. And then you watch the movie and you go, "Oh my God, this is a genius movie." I mean, and I feel like it's yeah. very. I mean, I forgot about it. Oh, it yeah. feels like until I saw the um, that clip. And then that's one of the better ones in that mid period for Eddie Murphy. I feel like I would love to listen to like a 14 part podcast on just Eddie Murphy's, you know, career and life and everything. Cause he, I mean, what an incredible talent, obviously, right. From the beginning, like so young popping off at, you know, Saturday Night Live, 17, 18 years yeah. old. And then, you know, in the movies and everything, but then somewhere, somewhere in that late nineties post golden child, you know, post yep. uh, Boomerang or somewhere in there and Cotton Club. Not Cotton Club, what was that one called? Anyway, but yeah, there was somewhere down, you know, getting long into the 90s. It just got bad. But then, the you, then, you, had, but then you had the Nutty Professor. Oh, Nutty and, Professor. And however you feel about that. I mean, not not great, but probably made a lot of money. And that buoyed him for a while. I mean, it, it was a great movie. It, it has a lot of problematic themes when you look back at it now. Yeah. That would, they'd be like, oh, okay. But, but I think he, he did a the lot. The kids w- watched yeah. it and were like, loved it. The farting dinner like, scene? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the best scenes ever. Yeah. And he's playing like half the characters. Yeah. I mean, he's, yeah. Uh, yeah. So so talented. Uh, did you see Dolomite is my name? The Rudy Ray Moore biopic that was by the same guys that did Ed Wood, the same writers. That was great. It was a Netflix one. Not, no, I don't not think so. everything you want it to be, but more of kind of a return. Like, well, oh, is Eddie Murphy being funny? Kind of yeah, feeling, you know, and then, then there was the new Beverly Hills Cop, pretty good, pretty good. I didn't see that. Almost, yeah, was it good? I mean, yeah, you know, it wasn't. It's yeah, I feel like it, he. It's, it's hard, you know, because I think he battles with his own character. I think he's, you know, he created something that um, just the world fell in love with, and he wanted to do more, wanted yeah. to go further, you know, and it's his, he's his own enemy in that regard. Like, where I think he won't go do certain things. Like, there was a famous thing where, like, he won't he he retired his own laugh, like that kind of Desi or yeah. like, eh, 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 eh. like yeah. he, he purposely trained himself to never laugh like that again. Cause he felt like it was commodified. I mean, it's, 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 it's a good it story, you know, that's it became stuff, like, bigger than him. Right. And stuff. I mean, it was, it was a signature thing, you know, yeah. but he didn't want to have be typecast. And I'm sure there's, yeah. there's a million things and, you know, he's an interesting guy. I don't know. I don't know the whole story of it, but you know, obviously I loved him. As a but also guy. very, he's huge. Yeah, very and delirious um, as a stand-up. It's huge. Oh my god! You know what I mean, like, I think, like, yeah. It's, 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 what, it's, what was the one after Delirious? Delirious raw. and then Raw. Yeah. yeah, Raw was the purple outfit, and Delirious was the red outfit. I mean, I have those yeah. things memorized. Yeah, you know, things I can't it, say on on mic now, but I mean, yeah. I just have it like tattooed in my brain for my, my entire life. It's well, again, huge. those like what I was talking about last week. Those were one of those tapes that I had that just said like oh, Led god, Zeppelin. Yeah. Led Zeppelin <laughs> three, yeah. I'm like, yeah, tr- like, trust me, mom. I'm listening to Led Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah, it's really delirious. Which was already I, like, I, yeah. I had delirious on tape from like a truck stop. Like you could just buy it, like as a on, as an audio yeah. format. They had those things, and they had this like, you know, um, what is it? I want to party all the time. Single. Yeah, Start party like, all the time. Put, put a put a coconut up your butt. Put a telephone yeah. pole up your butt. Up your butt. Put butt. <laughs> up your butt. I can't find that on street. I was trying to show that to the kids. Which is Eddie Murphy list things you could put up your butt. Does it exist? Does it, not not that I could find on uh, the Spotify. Maybe it's a YouTube thing, but uh, yeah, he must have control over all hilarious. that stuff. Like, yeah, that's not that's not going to get the light of day anymore. Yeah, well, that was the big thing why Delirious was out of print for so long, the first one, because he he you know made some very insensitive jokes about HIV and AIDS. Yeah, and it was it was of the time, you know. I mean, I think it was still early yeah. on in the culture and the sort of understanding of it. But yeah. I think you know when it came time to either keep it in print or reissue it or license it or do something with it, he he didn't feel comfortable. So this is always the story. I don't know if it's powerful yeah. or is I mean, it's probably true. I worked at video stores for years and then, and people would come in and, you know, want delirious. And it's like, Oh, it's been out of print. Like whatever copies we've had have been stolen, you know, like wow. 10 years ago, like you can't find them. Um, and then at uh, Amoeba, you know, where we sold 
DVDs and VHS and stuff. People would always call it like, okay, I'm looking for Delirious on DVD. Like it was never issued on DVD. It was for yeah. years, for years and years. And then it finally, I don't know, it was probably towards the, the end of the aughts, maybe 2008 or 2010. Um, there was something, something that came out, you know, Delirious came out. Like Raw was always in print or it had longer, you know, in print time. But Delirious was like, that was the Holy Grail. That was the one that like, I remember we came in, I think we sold, we had it listed for like $200 for like Jeez. a VHS copy of Delirious. Because at the time it was so hard to get. Yeah. It was one of those rare things that everybody knew of, but no one could find. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's rarity. I mean, but it's interesting. It's interesting when that stuff happens though, because those things are of the time. And then, I mean, you listen to all that stuff, like old Sam Kinison and all that. And you go, Oh, well, that's wow. just gnarly. Okay. Yeah. This did not Dark. age, did not age. Well, I could see, yeah. you know, funny yeah. at the time. <laughs> if you're, if you're of the, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, um, but a lot of that, a lot of that stuff. I don't know. Comedy is a weird one that way. But but you do watch like old Steve. Mar- I mean, whatever. Three quarters of that Eddie Murphy stuff still holds up. Oh, crazy! Brilliant. It's mostly just like the political or social social commentary, I guess. This is my house. I get drunk in my house. <laughs> yeah, all the I family walk. stuff is so amazing. And the bitch is a Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> Saw her stick her head in the lake and come out the fish in it. Bitch like gonna go bunny, go to sleep. All of a sudden with his family, it's amazing. I mean, same yeah. you know, and Bill Cosby, you know, yeah. obviously as the monster that we all know him as. You know, decades and decades of of great stand up comedy and comedic yeah. stuff that was that was made for family that told a side side of you know the, his life or a version of you know the black experience in America, you know, was from his point of view. Yeah. And, uh, for better, you know, obviously it's just, it's not, it's not great. It doesn't look great now in, in hindsight, in the, the eyes of, of the nostalgia, you know? But, yeah. But I, I grew up on the Cosby show. I, I loved Bill Cosby. Oh, I loved all the, 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 the character, the, the material, obviously not the man, you know what I mean? I think this, this is the thing our generation is having to deal with. I think more than any other generation or, 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 or the genera- other generations in the past, you know, as are really all of our kind of idols have, you know, from the eighties, 70s and 80s and 90s and even further you know continues to happen you know what i mean the, the uh, understanding the the criminality of of the celebrity of the celebrity yeah. culture like you know, what really people get away called. with yeah i mean we had no idea so i don't think i don't feel i think i felt guilty at first obviously with bill cosby because you're just i feel like i'm implicated like i can't like his i feel bad that i liked his comedy what does that say about me am i a terrible person because i like you know, Bill Cosby stand up as a kid, or I watched him every week on TV with millions of other people, you know, of yeah. all races and all genders and all that thing, you know, it was like, no, it was ubiquitous. It was not our fault, you know, that we, that he held that place in our, in our life. It's his fault for all the horrible crimes, but yeah, but it's a weird one. You know, I don't know of any other, I don't know the story. You know I mean? It's like Richard Nixon got disgraced cause he, he, uh, taped, uh, his competitors, uh, office he bug, yeah. put a bug in their office and now you're just like oh god yeah the the, the kind of political crimes like the, i wish we could go back to that <laughs> there's, just a, there's enough more menial, outrage yeah menial taping of of uh of political opponents <laughs> yeah and that's enough for, for a sitting president to resign well like, what? the thing is too though that that <clears throat> people were definitely doing all the same horrible things before yes. that there Absolutely. just was no uh there wasn't all the the burden of proof was on the victims and then nobody believed the victims back then yeah. like they are starting to more now. And so then it just became a silent, like you don't talk about that. Like this doesn't get talked about because you'll never get work again because even back then too, it's like the laws weren't as stringent. And so it's like, no, we're just actually going to, blackball you and we're going to get you out of here and we're going to like you don't have any you don't have any like there's no law to protect you as a victim so right yeah you should I mean, have I gotten imagine, into this profession yeah, if you didn't yeah. want to be completely like demoralized and harassed and everything else and yeah. and i swear i think now those things are coming to light more like when you even hear whatever about puff daddy like all all of those things you're like well, yes, 
but then also like look who he learned he, who he learned everything from and you look at all those people and you're like oh yeah all those people were implicated in a lot of other stuff back like these things like hopefully this this idea of in in this like especially in the entertainment industry i think is like rife with all that kind of stuff because it's built on like building young people up to make them into these huge money making stars and then everybody makes their money off the percentages of that kid. Mm -hmm. And then you're a kid and you're the most famous kid and you're being like, now go here, now go here, now go here. I mean, you even watched, did you ever watch that Billie Eilish documentary? No. It was like a Netflix thing. It was like a couple hours. And there was all this stuff of, you know, when she was 16, 17, or maybe even earlier, maybe 15. And she was starting to do those, like, she was literally performing in, like little venues or malls and you know, that kind of stuff. And then a song is getting more popular and the venues are getting a little bigger, but then it shows a part where she's in with inner, like sitting in with interview, like an interview, but also she has like pretty bad Tourette's <clears throat> at times that start like, you know, when stress hits and whatever. And she's sitting in on this interview with this guy and you can just tell she's just like, why Why did you put me here? Why did you guys put me here? And then they show in the bus later, you know, they have the cameras on. And she's like, don't ever do that to me again. And she's like mm. 16, you know, and her mom I mean, is her was, manager, the, you know, was the guy or whatever. Her, on her or and what was the... It was, was just, the they were just, just pushing vibes. and they're like, this is the time we have to get as much stuff as possible. We used da, 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 da. And you see all that stuff and you're like, yeah, because you, you now as a 16, 17, 18 year old are now like responsible for all those people's paychecks. Mm. Right. <laughs> and they yeah. put you in that position. But now like, if you go away, they all have to go, they all have to find new jobs your voice goes out, they, they all have to find new jobs or they're 10% or 12% or 3% or whatever they're getting off of you. Yeah. Is like, so then you see all these adults conspiring against their money-making child that they're, <laughs> that they're pushing out into the world. And you're like, well, of course it's horrible then. Like yeah. what a, what a crazy, <laughs> what a crazy like business, like setup. Like this is a horrible business setup. And you even see it like with the, you hear about, I mean, it's pretty famously happens with rappers, right? When they get this big thing, they give them a huge chunk of money, like 300,000, 400,000, $500,000. Like, but you got to get it. You got to go get a chain, go to my chain guy. You got to get a car. Here's my guy at the dealership, blah, blah, blah. They're all getting a cut off the back. You know, it's like, cause they're sending them in, but they famously like, and you have to buy a house, right? You have to get this house. That's like, nice because that's you know that's where the money is real estate whatever but they get them to spend all the money so then they can never stop working <laughs> because they spent all the money like now they owe that money back to get to the next deal to get to yeah. the next like and so it's like this famous and i heard like i don't even remember who it was but it was some like a rapper that was like yeah no i was right there and just went and I just had a business person in my ear going, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> you don't want to owe anybody anything ever. Like never don't, owe don't anybody anything. Yeah. Like if they think you can make your money, then make, you're the, you're half of the business, right? They're the business side. You're the music side, but you're also the business side. And you're now in a relationship. Like, would you ever go get a job and then have them go like, we're going to give you a job. I'm going to give you two years salary up front. <laughs> but if you quit early, you owe it back to me. <laughs> and then also I get to set your hours, whatever I can yeah. to make sure that I get that money back. We'll plus, you out. plus, plus you would never take that job. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to give you two years salary in advance. Yeah. Hope you make it back, buddy. And if I you just, don't, yeah. you actually work here forever I, and you can never leave. Terrible. Like, of I mean, course, I, yeah. it's like the most abusive situation possible. But it could I mean, also be very lucrative if you're smart, right? Like if you're an artist and you're smart. 
I don't even know if it's if it's about being smart. I mean, it's really it's, the word that keeps coming to my mind is you know it's, it's exploitation, you right? Know I mean, and, and on on like the purest sense of that word of like one that even if the person knows what's happening to them, are they really able to even make that deal against themselves? Like no. you know, what I mean, what is would you would a sane person ever? You know, what I mean, basically sign up for like an, it's a form of indentured servitude. You know, and right. even if you're like, oh yeah, no, I'm sound mind body is what I'm doing. And it's like, no, not really. And this, and it's not, and it's, and again, it's not overstating it because again, you know, it's like when you owe somebody an, an unknowable amount of money, it's just yes, yeah, everything you do for the rest of your life belongs to me. And yeah, that's, sign, and that's signing away your publishing. Like so, everything you write, yeah. every thought you have, every word, every note you ever play for the rest of your life belongs to me. That's the deal. You yeah. said I, I gave you. Thirty thousand dollars. That's a yeah. lot of money. You yeah. are twenty years old, twenty five yeah. years old. You know, yeah. you're never you've never seen twenty five thousand dollars before. But for that, you will never be able to write a lyric or a piece of music that doesn't. Uh, uh, the publishing rights don't belong to me or the company that I sell it to for the rest of our lives. Yeah, and it goes. You through. know what I mean? That's and that's and that's standard practice. That's like that's that's step number one of of being uh, a recording artist is signing away your publishing. You know what I mean? Or, or yeah. could be. And again, whether it's smart to or not to. Yeah. You know, and that's not even selling your catalog. This isn't your master. But the idea of that, you, that it's even legal to sell future rights to future <laughs> creations. Know. You know that's what I mean? Crazy. That just feels like that's exploitation because how would you ever know what that is? And I get that there, you're, you know, it's a, it's a crap shooter. There's a, there's a risk or role on that. But if you're somebody who's an artist and plans on making you know, art the rest of their lives or just has an emotional attachment to making art or some compulsion to making art through whatever, yeah. make, you know, chemical condition in your brain, you, you making art is, is part of your soothing mechanism or part of your life, you know? And so now, but now that's become, become commodified. Yeah. That, you know what I mean? That it's like, well, no, it's like saying, you know, you're never able to walk unless you're wearing these shoes or something. It's like, well, I'm going to walk a lot of places. Maybe I won't have these shoes. Well, no, if you're not wearing those shoes, you can't walk. You're like, yeah. but no, but I need to walk to survive. I need to, I'm going to have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> well, no, you're unable to go to the bathroom unless you're wearing our, our shoes and we're going to have a video on you at all times. They're the kind of thing. It's this thing of, you know, I think like I always, I, I love writing music. I'll write music for my whole life, whether anyone buys it or I sell it or whatever it is. But I just, it's something that's integral to my mental health. And so then to put a, num- a monetary number on that, you know what I mean? That's exploitation. And like, I can't, I, I don't even understand what that means to write, to sell that off and to have like a younger person whose parents are somehow in the business. And really the only goal that, you know, I don't know what the child psychology of it is, but like under 15, you know, you're really looking to appease your parents and you're trying to establish right. that bond with your parental love, you know what I mean? And, and that protection and being of value to your parent and your, and to your parents' emotional safety is your yeah. key goal. And if your parent is able to exploit that, you know, by saying, well, if, if you really want dad's love, you're going to have to go out there and work on this TV yeah. show for 18 hours today. And don't stop yeah. dancing, even when your feet are bleeding. And yeah. even when you have to pee your pants or whatever, all the terrible shit, you know, things are like, you need to do that in order for dad to love you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And there goes, you know, you're the entire history of children, you know, entertainers, you know, which is mean? why there's, there's all those decades and decades and decades of this, this thing going on over and over again. And you're just like, it's, it's, it's irrational. It's, it should be illegal. You know, it's, horrible. yeah. I mean, technically now it is, they have to have your the kid has to have uh, a separate bank account from their well, the, parents. Yeah. Jackie Coogan. The, the that's actor, what it is. The Coogan law. right? Yeah. He, he was the actor that played um, Fester in the Adams family thing when he was older. But when he was a kid, his parents screwed him over so badly in terms mm. of spending his money that they had to come up with a law and they, and they based it in his name, the Jackie Coogan law. Right. That, that, that the parents that can only, are only allowed to take X amount as a manager. They have to have some kind of like role of it. Yeah. It's you like know, the 10% to, or 15% and the rest or of it has to is legally has to get put into a thing. But think about that too. That's until you're 18. So even yeah. a lot of these kids, you know, the, the trust they get, you know what I mean? They've been, they've been kind of fucked in the head from an early age and you're now you're 18. You're not really, mature responsible no. enough to know what to do with ten dollars let alone you know ten thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars whatever especially you if, made and then you give it to them you, then it's not really right it's, it seems like that's i get it you shouldn't keep the money from them they need it to survive on of but a 18 year old with a hundred thousand dollars is yeah ridiculous like especially just, an 18 year old yeah. who knows they're gonna get a hundred thousand dollars in a bank account they haven't worked like from something they did when they were a kid and then yeah. all through high school of like, well, 
I can run up the credit cards. I can buy a car. I can do all this because when when I'm 18, that money's going to come flowing in. I'm going to be rich for the That's rest like, of my life. Yeah, it's like phase two of the like weird abuse of that whole situation of being a money earner versus being a child whose love yeah. is unconditional and attached to, you know what I mean? Just whatever value system that your culture or a community or parents put into place rather than being an earner. You know, it just doesn't, yeah. doesn't it'll never work, work out. I mean, there's all that money should just be given to a psychological fund that you will just have to then go into a, <laughs> some type of psychological care. Yeah. You know, well, and, and Randy, I'm the perfect person to run that fund for you. Yeah. My name is <laughs> Dr. Go Jimmy Duarte, and I have a fund management company for children who have been taken totally advantage of by their parents. Trust me, I am not taking advantage of you. It's insane. For only 20% of every transaction, yeah. but I, I will really, make sure yeah. that nobody screws you over for 20% of every transaction. But I think, you know, celebrity functions in, in our society, like kind of the way like the royals do in, in like English society yeah. or specifically generations in the past where it's this type of caste system where we somehow imbue these celebrities with higher status mm-hmm. or, you know, more value culturally, socially. And therefore it becomes our sort of like lot in life to either aspire to or aspire to become or aspire to, to, to take down this class of people, which right. ultimately just serves as that kind of distraction method from any real levers of power. You know what I mean? We're like, Oh, the queen did this. or the, the prince did that. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, industry industry government or, and and you know people actually passing laws and doing things are over here but we're worried yeah. about what the kardashians butt size and what they did on the last <laughs> thing you know and like oh queen queen kim she did something naughty today oh boy yeah. i got to get riled up about that you know it serves in that kind of function where it just isn't really attached to anything and these celebrities and you know and it's so the the criminality of the celebrity world or of the the controversy it is it's again i it's always i love that phrase where it's it's not a flaw it's a feature of the whole thing it's meant to be it's meant to have the release valve okay now we're going right. to behead behead the uh the aristocracy and replace it with a new aristocracy you know what i mean and got it and it's just it's the generational thing you have to like build these people up to take them down but the, there is no build up without the threat of the of the guillotine holding over your head so the idea of any but then and then we say things like well if they were just smarter if they were just if they someone could have just done this or that and it's like no the whole thing is built on a fucking rotted out foundation of like termites and and horribleness yeah. you know what i mean that the, the, every time a celebrity is is arrested it's like that's what they're meant to do they're they're all yeah that's that's the point of them is to get you know exalted and then destroyed so well, it's it's like it's like, it's like an en- yeah, it's like an entity the group projects <coughs> onto. Mm-hmm. So it's like everybody can project their loves and their fears and their anxiety and their hopes and dreams, and they project them onto this person. They're like Rihanna or whatever, and like, oh, oh my yeah. god, if I was only Rihanna, she's beautiful. And, I, and she's like if a I business could buy person, and, and she, uses, I could yeah, and she has like. Uh, you know, lives in the castle and is married and kids and like, Oh my God. But then, but then you start going, yeah, but she must be horrible. This, there's <laughs> gotta be something. And then like, right. Because you're yeah, just looking at yourself, down. you're looking right. at yourself. You're like, well, because I'm, I have horrible feelings. Yeah. I have horrible feelings. I do these horrible Why things. Why does she think so she's she better be than horrible. me? Why does she get so, yeah. all these great things? She's not so great. This is, but then you get like, the more the more uh, popular you get, then you get like f- five million people projecting their hopes and fears and dreams and loves and whatever onto you, and then <laughs> then you go, wow, I can I can do anything. So you're telling me if I like tweet a certain thing, like I can. I mean, I remember when when whatever like Snapchat and all that stuff was happening, and like Kim Kardashian tweeted like. Snapchat's not so great or whatever. Like it was yeah. like, this sucks. Sunk the and their stock, stock went yeah. down like $2 billion in a day. Like this is like, this is not even what kind of weird power is this? This is like, <laughs> it's Again, just insanity. Or yeah. you're looking at like all the crazy stuff Elon Musk does or whatever. It's like, you just look at these people and you're like, well, of course they think that they're, unstoppable because they're kind of unstoppable you know it's like 
who's going to stop the guy that has however many billions of dollars when you actually look at how much a billion dollars is and then you mm-hmm. have multiples of them and then you go yeah it's like more than some countries yeah. in one person's hands it, well, like what what are we going <laughs> to I mean, it's, it's, it, it's, it's happened Other than before. watch them fall. Other than exactly. love it when we watch them fall. And like, you look at him like, well, he's not so great. Look how unhealthy he looks. If yeah. I had a, if I had a hundred billion dollars, I'd at least have a trainer <laughs> or whatever. You know, it's like I, you'd have a chef that would just not feed you McDonald's all day or whatever. But it doesn't then matter. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What are you going to? Yeah. And then you the, go, who the knows what all those people die. are doing? Yeah, you know I mean, Subner Redstone, yeah. you know, looked like the, the Crypt Keeper by the end. Oh my God, still, they all do, right? It still has to die. All these people are just going to, you know, I mean, like Rupert Murdoch. And it's and then it's the, the power struggle. It's the secession, you know, TV shows and everything. Yeah. The family just ripping each other's throats out to, to get to the money and the thing. And yeah. it just doesn't, Stressful, horrible lives. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. No. You know what I mean? That's the, yeah. That's fun. That's fun. There's a lot yeah, of time on yachts, though. That's true. If you want to hang out on yachts, that's where you go. Have you ever been on a yacht? No, I don't want to go on a yacht. <laughs> I mean, but, like it's the worst. I don't like being on boats. Yep. I'm okay like being on a boat on a lake. I've been on a boat on the ocean a couple of times. I get pretty seasick. Yeah, but I've been on little boats. I've never been on like a big like a cruise ship or anything like no, that. No, I haven't done a cruise. I, I went on a rich person's boat. I don't know if it was a yacht, but the person was rich and they yeah. owned the boat. But but they have to they have to get the guy to drive it. They don't drive yeah. the boat themselves. Like when you're rich, that would be amazing though if it is like no no. I actually I also drive my own boat. I would really? assume you would like, right. Like yeah. what's the point of having a boat? You can't even drive the thing. I don't know. I don't yeah. have any vehicles. I can't drive, but that's a, I guess another like yeah. stratosphere of wealth. You yeah. own equipment that you don't, that you're not, you can't operate, but yet you own it and you pay for you it. You got to put that money somewhere, else. Randy. Yeah. In, in the boats. So um, what, so tell me your boat experience. Oh, but, oh no, but we just, we just went, experience. I don't even know if it was a yacht. It was a, it was a boat. And we like went out at sunset with like some other people. It was like a business kind of thing. And there's beers and cigarettes and weed. And, you know, it didn't get, it didn't get, um, you know, sexual or cocaine out, but it, but it just feels like that's the next place you go. It's like, ultimately it was like, just like a bunch of dudes, you know, like all on a boat, like out, like what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> like, is somebody going to start sucking someone else's dick here? Like, what are we doing? Where is this supposed to go here? I don't get what's supposed to happen. Like, how does this get better? Cause it's that feeling of like emptiness of like weird pursuits. Like, yeah, we did it. We're high fiving and you, you cheers, you cheers your beers. And you're like, okay, wow. Look at that. Hey, should we go back? Yeah, let's go back. Hey, we did it. You're like, what the fuck was that for? Like how much money did that just cost for us all to just kind of go out there and feel like, the, with the sea breeze in our in our face and fall over, <laughs> and then watch everybody fall over because everyone was drunk already and oh, you know what I mean it just, it just felt like it's like this was dangerous being drunk on land now he's gonna go be drunk on a boat I don't know it just, just sit really, out there sit out there and talk about how many people are not on boats right now yeah can you imagine it's pretty nice it, it all felt, a lot of people who are not on boats right now. It all felt fa- fairly hollow. And again, maybe yeah. I didn't have the good boat experience. Maybe you're supposed to be with Leonardo DiCaprio and models and, and cocaine and those types of things. It's, maybe that's the way to do it. But it definitely it was not that experience. So I don't I know. I mean, I feel like every photo that, that I've seen in like the tabloids or anything of him on a boat with a bunch of young ladies, he doesn't like he's just kind of hanging out. Doesn't look yeah. like he's having a great time. I love, I love just, the pictures of Jack Nicholson eating a sandwich, like in the, in the oh ocean. You know? He's like smoking a cigarette, eating a sandwich, floating in like the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. It's just like I mean, I guess if that's your thing. I don't know. I but I, I'm I'm not like a huge fan of like I like a vacation, but only for a couple days. I'm not a huge fan of like hanging out, sure, like just yeah. not doing anything. I like I a vacation. Yeah. I don't know. I just, don't I, know, I like yeah. going with the kids and doing stuff. Sure. And going exactly. with Michelle and like, we got, we got some stuff to do. Let's go see some stuff. Some adventures. We're, we're going to go to like, yeah. let's go to a place and like, let, maybe we'll walk through a castle. Let's go sure. see something that's like 700 years old. Let's go like walk on a cobblestone street and talk about how old these bricks are or whatever. Like I'll do that. Have some coffee, do the stuff sitting on a beach somewhere. I don't know, man. Maybe it's because I'm in LA and I don't even, we don't even, I don't even go here and sit on a beach. Right. Yeah. Like maybe twice a year we go to the, like I thought when I moved to LA, I'm like, I'm going to be at the beach every day. I'm going to be jumping in the water, it's swim so in the ocean, all that stuff. And then like when, um, you know, cause I, Travis had moved down here first who I'd known 
And, and I'm like, man, you must go out to the beach all the time. He's like, eh, not really. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to go to the beach all the time when I moved to LA. I moved here. I'm like, A, the beach is real far away. With traffic, it's even farther away. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you have a crappy car that doesn't have air conditioning. Then it becomes like if it's hot enough to go to the beach, it's too hot to drive to the beach in your car with no <laughs> AC. And then you get there and you can't find parking. But you're like, okay, then you find the beaches. You're like, okay, I, I know the beach this where I can go, where no one goes, but then it's an extra 45 minutes to drive to that beach. And you have to park on the other side of the highway, and then you have to go down a big trail. So you can only bring like a little tiny chair, maybe, yeah. and a blanket. Then you go down there, and you're like, oh, the waves are too big to jump in. I'm going to get sucked down into the it's sea. It's so cold. So then you, like, sit yeah. there, you sit there for a while, and you're like, for about an hour, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Yeah. But then we realized, like, okay, we have to go with friends and go to a place that has, like, volleyball, like, something to do. And we go and play volleyball. And then you're like, okay, this beach is fun. But then, you know, it's still, like, three hours. So the last thing I'm going to do is fly all the way across the world and, like, sit on a boat or, <laughs> or like, sit yeah. on a beach somewhere. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, hey, beaches are kind of the same everywhere. Water's a little warmer, a little colder. I like but, the warm you know, water. I Again, yeah I, do. yeah, I have to say, we went to Hawaii this summer for the first time as a family. Pretty good, and uh, I'd sit on the beach in Hawaii. It's pretty fun. <laughs> I, just, I take yeah. back everything I just said. Yep, never mind. Yep, it's like, <laughs> never uh, mind. That was that was a good time. I sat on the beach for like five hours a day for three days. Yeah, you found the good beach. You found the <laughs> yeah. good vacation. Yeah, the good one. Yeah, never mind. Um, My rant is over. <laughs> take, I take back everything I said. Yeah, yeah. Um, Rudy DeAnda, had you had yeah. you heard him before? How awesome was he? No, I hadn't. Uh, he was he amazing. Was I was actually gonna I was gonna segue when we were talking about the music industry and all oh, that God, kind of yeah. stuff, because then hearing him talk and hearing you guys talk back and forth, I feel like No Age was very similar in the way where you guys were really finding a way. Like, how do I exist in this thing where there's obviously like the other side of it where you can push and prod and try to get into the like whatever. Or can we make this like as beneficial to us as possible and still keep doing this for as long as possible under our own rules and be able to just like make music? Cause really all, all I want to do is make music record and play and that's it. And I feel like him, he just was such a good, like a, he was so kind of positive. Everything he said it was just like positive and happy and like funny and, super relaxed but also when he was just like yeah i don't know we couldn't bring our the second percussionist out because just didn't make sense money wise so it sucks but you know that's how it goes sometimes and and just making like having to make those little decisions so the band can keep like keep going and going you know instead of yeah like well let's take out a loan and let's try to get a bigger deal so we can make more money and, you know, Oh, Oh, this person, a ton of money, whatever. It's like, no, right. this tour, we're just doing four, a four piece. And maybe next time we'll, you know, he's, he was like, I would love to bring out a three piece orchestra and I would love to do this. I would love to do that, but you know, it's not in the cards. So to keep playing music, we just, this is our setup right now and it's awesome. And yeah, it was great. And then I listened to that. I loved how he talked about playing music, like, music with the thought of it being sampleable. I thought that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then I listened to that song, 85 or whatever. Oh God. Yeah. It sounds, sounds like a Dr. Like, Dre song, oh, yeah. right? This like, sounds like you sampled this first riff that it starts out with. Yeah. And it yeah. sounds, it has that like, I don't know if it's a theremin. What is that? It sounds that, like it. Yeah. Whoop, whoop, like yeah. whatever, do, but it's like Dr. Dre it's used a bunch of music that had yeah, that in it. What is that? And it yeah. became that kind of West coast, like a, like kind of West coast sound of. Yeah. What but it has that, that yeah. in it, and uh, yeah, so cool. And then him talking about Mexican food in Chicago. I had no oh, idea. God. Oh, yeah. What is that? Uh, oh, G-Funk was the, the style of yeah. sound. Uh, it's, it's a Moog. It's like a kind of high. high oh, okay. Oh, that would make really? sense. Like you hit the yeah. Moog, and then you have that little wee yeah. wee. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a saw wave sort of thing you can do. Got it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, it was he's, great. He's, he's great. But no, I think it's, it's, it hits on that thing, that idea of scale. You know what I mean? Where it's yeah. again, like if you're trying to be the biggest artist in the world, you're, you'll never be satisfied. You know what yeah. I mean? And I, but I've had, I've talked to people. I remember we, we had a meeting once with a business manager who was like, you know what, like, 
do you guys want to play the Staples Center? And we're like, no, not really. Yeah. He's like, oh, okay, then you're, you're never going to make it. We're like, okay, <laughs> that's fine, I guess. You know, yeah. because it's like, why? But he's, he's like, if you don't have that, like, kill or be killed instinct and want to, like, just ascend to the highest level every second of the day, then it's never going to happen for you. And we're yeah. just kind of like, okay. yeah, but that's unfulfilling. Like, that's a horrible yeah. life to feel like you're a piece of shit because you're not playing at the Staples Center. Like, how can you create, a like, a, a life value system where you degradate yourself for not achieving somebody else's dream? Like, if it's not your dream, it's not your dream. You know, yeah. if, it's, if it happens, right. that's cool. But, like, I think at that point we were already – Dean and I were lucky enough that, you know, the, the attention we received at the NOAA, we were in our late 20s. Yeah. I could see us, like, being, you know, in our late teens or even early 20s and maybe not having – had as much life experience to sort of under, to not understand what that meant. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we'd already toured f- for years and slept on, um, you know, floors and couches and we'd done all that stuff to where we're like, no, like a comfortable existence is playing small theaters. And that's yeah. realistic for us because we want to make weird music. Like if you want to play the Staples Center, you're going to have to make creative choices that, that totally. appeal to larger people. Right. And it, to us, it, we were so stoked and I think we were giddy on our thing. Like people actually like the weird music we're making. Like we keep making yeah. weird music and more and more people keep, keep listening to it. Like, yeah. It's insane. We're writing we're this actually, thing out as far as yeah, we like go. We're, like, we're pulling a couple more people here and there, but we're still able to make but, the stuff that we're making. And it's, it's catchy enough that <laughs> people that don't even know a lot of the bands that you guys are playing with or reference to are able to catch on to it and go like, oh, yeah. I like that. I mean, you guys played the Hollywood Bowl. Well, opening, you know? opening. Anybody could have done that place. You know what I mean? Nah. I don't think we had a thing. Up that's not anybody. Like, that's like the, that's like, I mean, yes, opening yeah. for Pavement and Sonic Youth. Yeah, I mean, come on, like, give me yeah. a break. That's not was, like, that's not a a anybody could do that. I don't know. That's a, no. to me, like that's a layup that was like, we didn't have to sell a single ticket. I think that's the thing where it gets hard is like when, you know, when people rely on you and your band or whatever image or whatever your like marketable asset you know is to, to, to sell tickets and put butts in seats. Like yeah. we've been, we've been put on that hot plate so many times. Yeah. And I always feel like the number just comes up low to where it's like, okay, I get it. You know what I mean? But then it's like, well, can you do this? Can you? But I think we were also at that time where things would shift it into social media town. And yeah. we sort of were like, well, no, we're kind of these guys over here. Like we, we're still the like CD generation. And we're yeah. Like, yeah. But now it's okay. No one's going to buy anything, but you got to promote yourself 24 seven on social media. We're That's right good. in that like phase of stuff. Like, but, no one's buying anything. Why am I, why am I working harder to promote myself? Like I like making flyers and selling CDs. Like, Oh yeah, well that doesn't yeah. exist. It's like, I get it. It doesn't exist, but I'm just telling yeah. you like, I can't pretend to be somebody else and like right. all of a sudden exactly. like, become a content creator. You're not going to do TikTok and be stoked, dances and be stoked to not sell anything to not st- sell records. It's like, I don't have that. I, I'm just not, I didn't grow up with that. You know what I mean? I'm sure somebody yeah. else will. Yeah, but totally. I, but, but I, just I do. Think, yeah, we we had fun. We did it. We did it well. We did it well while we did it, and it's you know we're still having fun playing. But the idea of like more and more people keep coming. But that feeling was like every time we got through one velvet rope, we just got yeah. into another room, and yeah. there was just more velvet ropes. Yeah, and it was and like, it, oh, why? What are we doing at this party? It's like you kind of there's the thrill of when you're younger, like I'm gonna sneak into the celebrity party, and yeah. you're then you're lucky enough to get in, and now you're here, and you're like, wait, but there's bigger celebrities over there. There's another room yeah. inside of that room and they get into that room and well, there's another room over there. And it's yeah. a metaphor of like, you know, you're never really making it and it's kind yeah. of design again by design to sort of make you feel like you're a piece of shit. And it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like as soon as you sell out the 500 capacity club, then they put yeah. you in a, you know, thousand seat theater and it's like, Oh yeah, but you didn't sell that. It's like, and that's three quarters full. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, you only sold, you know, like 700 and everyone's really bummed and really upset with you. You're like, okay, but wait. And then, you know, like, well, we're, but we'll put you in a 1500 one next time. It's like, yeah, yeah. well, you we only sold 1200. Like, well, that would have been good for the last one, but we, yeah. the rooms kept getting bigger. And like, you know, and again, it's a strategy. <laughs> we were being pushed along a, a certain kind of um, road of yeah. inflation of, of popularity. Like you, sometimes you book, you book the big room and more people show up. Cause like, Oh, this band's in a big room. I want to see him in the big room. Yeah. Or they don't, and you, you, yeah. you play small rooms, and that's fun too. But again, but for you, like to work so hard and to be out on the road, just grinding it out, and even if you're, you know, we're staying in motel sixes or whatever, and it's like that's better than sleeping on someone's floor. That was good. Yeah, that's about totally. you know, I achieved that goal. But again, I can't like every night have a promoter go, yeah, I just thought we'd have more people. Well, it's it's Wednesday in in you know Kansas, and we're yeah. not, we're not on the radio. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Yeah. Why? I guess everybody sold you a bill of goods that we were the most popular band in the world, but 
Yeah. So we only sold 800 tickets on, on a Wednesday in Kansas. Like that sounds huge. That's, yeah, a, huge that's a lot of people. Win. Yeah. Like I wish we could have that now. You know, I think 20 years later you go back and like, well, there's, you know, four tickets pre-sold for your thing. Like, <laughs> okay. I don't know. Like maybe yeah. people just show up. No, people don't show up anymore. It's either yeah. pre-sold or nothing. No one will show up on the day. Like, Oh, Okay. Well, that sounds good. I don't yeah. know, cancel the show. <laughs> yeah. know, it's like, I like guess. what do you want me to do about it? You're the promoter. Yeah. I I drove, I rented this van. I drove all the way here. I don't know. I got the gear. Like, should we just, is it better? Does it make yeah. your life better if I don't play music? Like yeah. kind of like, okay, well then I'll just go ahead and I'll, I'll set I'll, up in the park. Yeah. I guess we'll just, yeah. It's like, wait, went, that's supposed to be like the music industry, but somehow if you can't try to have people, then it's like, well, yeah, just, it was, we, we make more money not having bands, not play our venues. <laughs> like, <laughs> something's not making sense anymore here <laughs> it's weird man yeah i mean so the, i'll bring back so i went to a show what two nights ago in oh, a yeah. record store in riverside <laughs> awesome so um again our friend neil who used to be in a band way back in the late 90s called fast break it was like a east coast hardcore band and um his son tate now plays in like 700 bands mm -hmm. and so there's like a new band every week but the old band still exists so he played in like three bands of this show and then and then um Does you know it's drums? like road what's that does he play drums no no oh. he plays guitar but then oh, okay. but then some of the kids like it's like one of the bands is just it's like one one member is not in the band from the other band gotcha yeah, it's yeah. like an acoustic band and then there's like was, a hardcore band and then i was trying to think of heavier. the position the position we could play in three bands in one night i'm like it's gotta be drums. Yeah. That's the only guy, you know, the one like, okay, we all have the one drummer and he's in every band. Like, okay. Yeah. This one was guitar. Okay. Yep. And, uh, but then, um, then their friend, so their friends with piebald, do you know that man? You know, piebald, those old, guys? Old school. Yeah. yeah. But still touring or still playing and not touring as much, but playing, okay. going out like, you know, a couple weeks a year, I think. And, um, but the drummer, Luke, the drummer for Piebald was in Fast Break. Okay. And so Piebald were playing in LA. And then and then Neil talked to them. He's like, do you guys want to play a Fast Break show <laughs> at this record <laughs> store out in Riverside? And uh, so then they played also. And then Piebald came and played like a secret show or whatever to like 25 kids. Okay. Or, and it actually wasn't 25. It was like 50 kids packed were into they, this little tiny stoked? record store. Was it a fun thing? All these like... Yeah, they knew like the couple, you know, they played like five, every band played like six songs or something. Okay. And um, yeah, they played five or six songs and these, all these like hardcore, like hardcore kids from, from Riverside, you know, it's like ready to mosh and beat the shit out of each other and have fun and do all that stuff. Like new piebald songs and like had, had got, I mean, they knew they were going to play with, this is what I imagined. They knew they were going to play. So they were like, guys, here, like, here's the band. Here's the top six songs, whatever. I'm assuming they're, they're not because of whatever else, like the, the bands that were playing before were super heavy, hardcore thrash, like, you know, and, uh, but they're all singing along to piebald and like moshing and jumping up on stage and stage diving and, as much as you can stage dive in a record store and That's and uh it was awesome yeah it was great it was oh, cool. cool i was like sat there the whole time and was like oh, i love this energy i miss this energy <laughs> of like the 50 kids the 50 kids in a room going crazy yeah. and and um super positive and yeah it's fun yeah that's all super you need fun. yeah and then feeling like i'm like yeah i'm here i'm like you know taking some pictures and in the crowd whatever and then, and really not feeling any different, you know, it's like jumping back. I'm like, oh yeah, this is like 15 years ago or whatever, 20 years ago. And then, um, you know, kids is like, comes jumping over and like runs into me and he's like, oh, sorry, sir. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sir. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm so old. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, and then at one point, like you every just time throw the kids an elbow like, and drop come over, cause I was boom. like standing up on this chair, you know, like shooting some photos from above. 
And then like two kids like stood next to me and were like making sure no one like came back and hit me. And I'm like, Oh my God, am I that old? I was like, guys, I can take like, people can run into me. It's fine. I'm not like, I'm not this fragile. Yeah. I'm not this fragile. I'm not like your grandpa. Jeez. Just don't hit me in my knees. Yeah. Don't hit me in my knees. Yeah. Yeah. Just leave my my lower back is really flaring up right now. Stay away from my knees and my lower back, but everything else. I'm okay. I can just sit down for a minute. Yeah. But it was fun though. And you see that like, you know, and there's like hardcore kids and they're like, it's awesome. you know, let's keep it positive, but let's like get in there. And like music is about love and harmony. You know, it's just like, you're just going through all that stuff from yeah. like your teens and twenties. And, and it's still like, great. but then it was funny because, because the uh, fast break played and the, their singer couldn't make it out. And also one of their guitar players. So, so Tate played guitar in his dad's in band, dad's band, oh, which is rad. Amazing. And then, the, but one of their friends was the singer. And then he was like, I just want you guys to give it up. Like hardcore lives forever. And like these guys put out a record in 1994 and they're still playing. You know, it's like whatever. They're like, okay, guys, this is like, you don't have to make it seem like everyone's that old. <laughs> Like, can you believe it? They're here. Back in the they're 1900s, on stage. I can, I can barely believe that they can walk. Like the fact can that they believe. can even pick up guitars and still remember this stuff. They should all oh, be in mental goodness. institutions. <laughs> eating, <laughs> like, eating applesauce. Eating applesauce <laughs> and watching old reruns of 90s TV. Matlock. Now you yeah. want to know. <laughs> Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Oh but yeah, so it was, it was funny. Like those kind of like, like, is this a backhanded compliment? I can't tell, but you know, I'll take it. I'll yeah. take it. Yeah. 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 I love it. Yeah. I love it. These that's guys awesome. are as old as my grandparents. That's it. There you go. Yeah. That's where that's, you've gone too far. Okay. Now, <laughs> now I'm going to cut you kid. Yeah. I'm right. Taking it too far. Get I'll show here. you how to mosh. Don't, oh, quit, quit me. running so fast. Slow down. Yeah. I'm going to come get you. I'm going to take yeah. you. I've been stretching all morning. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to kick your ass. Hold on. Just, just, <laughs> let me, just let me put on my orthopedic shoes here. Hold on. You might yeah. Right. Place. I'm <laughs> yeah. coming to get you. Just stay there. So, <laughs> just don't move. move. Don't move for five minutes. Hold on. I'll be right there. Yeah. I'm going to get my walker. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. We're yeah. Fun. I, uh, yeah, I'm playing a solo show this Friday. It'll be fun in Pasadena at a uh, healing force of the universe records. That oh, sounds like fun. that's amazing. Yeah. Where's that? It it's in Pasadena. I don't know on Walnut Street. Okay, like it's like cool, right in the middle. Cool record store. Yeah, rad. I'm excited. That'll be fun. Friday, then, this Friday. Yeah, of this thing. I should probably say something at the beginning of the episode. Maybe everyone will have already heard me say something cool at the beginning of this episode. Yeah, like, encouraging people to go, go see me live. Yeah, fun. I, yeah, I played on that mountain the other day. I think we talked about that. Right? Yeah, we talked about yeah, that. that I know. Fun. I need to. I've missed all those mountain shows. You've done That's that like. Right. Three times? I've done this one. Maybe. This I think Photon now is I think this was the third one. Oh, but I did a different a different promoter that did one up in uh oh that spot was cool. I did um, with Shannon Lay. It was at the top of like Fair Oaks. If you just go oh, all the right. way up there, there's like an old weird, like a kind of like mansion with yep. all this like grounds and it's an Airbnb or something. What's that place called? Zarthura Ranch or something? Has that something with a Z or Zar- Zorthian Ranch. Zorthian Ranch, yeah. Yeah. That's weird. That was crazy. That was kind of like oh, you played show. at Zorthian Ranch. Yeah, that place is the history of that place is crazy. It's like a yeah. '60s crazy hippie commune. Yeah, yeah. And then the think, kids, like, like Clark Gable um, doing like LSD and like yeah, like, like all hippies. sorts of I all mean, sorts Clark of crazy. Cary Grant or somebody. Yeah, yeah. And then um, and then they the kids or the grandkids maybe started yeah, bringing it yeah. back and made it into kind of like an art. Um, like more of an artist residency compound kind of trip but situation. Yeah, like the roads but it's aren't like, really maintained. It's kind of like dirt roads going up. A hill, it was, like, it's like gnarly. 20 or 30 acres or something at the top of Altadena. It's, yeah. like, it's worth millions now. Yeah. <laughs> just like, and they're just hanging out, like making pottery and like smoking weed. I think most of yeah, there was like, a cow and some goats and chickens. Yeah. It's like bridges made out of rocks. Mm-hmm. It's like whatever hippies decided to put some stuff together, <laughs> build a barn <laughs> For whatever, it was cool. It was fun to play. I was I'm glad I got to be invited up there. Oh, that's awesome. There. But it's fine. I left. A, I left a Star Wars tote bag there, and I was like, you know, and I like, wrote the promoters. I was like, ah, you know, it was kind of. It was like one of the like conventions for tote bags. I was like, yeah, it'd be, be kind of cool if I could get it. And they're like, yeah, just drive up there. It's probably still there. And this is definitely one. This one again. One of those moments of like, fuck it. All right, I'm just gonna go up there. I like. I kind of yeah. remember where it was. Is like where I was doing merch, you know. But I yeah. just I, I pieced out and packed stuff up quick and left. So. 
I drove up there and this is probably three days later, yeah. you know, like whatever performed on a Friday, I go back on Monday and you know, at noon and the bags literally just sitting where I left it. Like there's, I think there's so many like hippies or people that just kind of cruise through there. I mean, there was packed with like 200, 300 people there for the yeah. show, but no one took it. And we were just yeah. kind of left it there as when I was like, it's still there. Yeah. Like, They're like, yeah, it'll be bit. Someone will be back for that. It's, yeah. Just leave it there. Someone, someone's looking for that. I'm sure. And yeah. I got, grabbed it, but I definitely feel like it's a reminder. Like if you ever lose something or like, ah, where did I put that thing? Like, and then you remember where you lost it. Yeah. Just, just go back. And it's get it. probably there. Chances are 90%. If you make the effort to go back to wherever it is, like we went and saw Peter Pan at the Pantages yeah. and then like walked down the street to get uh, like burgers, you know, after there was like, you know, like little places to eat on Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. And as we're like going to the burger shop, I'm like, Oh, my glasses. And I was like, Oh, of course I took my sunglasses off. Cause we're inside, you know, yeah. they, didn't, they didn't need them while we're in there. They must've fallen out. So then I go all the way back and everyone, you know, fighting, fighting against the human traffic, everyone, all of it. And, and I just try to like walk back in and the guy was just like, where are you going? I'm like I left my uh, sunglasses. He was like, huh? And like pointing me over to lost and found. And the lady's like, can you describe them? I'm like, you know, they're like black sunglasses. <laughs> and she's like, are they these? And she held them up. And I was like, yes, those yep. are them. I like, but my first instinct was like, ah, fuck, I just lost them. I was going on with my life. Like I, I really yeah. like these sunglasses. I wanted them back. And so just, just taking that like 10 minutes to walk all the way back. It was a pain in the ass. And I had to deal with the security guard. And now there's like social anxiety. Well, like, uh, well, I'm not trying to sneak back in. I just need to get the thing. I, I was just here. I had my ticket. Oh no. Jeez. And then, and then talking to the, you know, all the moments are just like, ah, oh, I'd rather just not do this, yeah. but I did it all. And I got him back. And I was like, oh, you know, it, it, it'll happen. It usually happens. It, yeah, Humanity, like man. It's can not be as great bad as sometimes. you think it is. Yeah. It's so no. much easier to just say, ah, oh, fuck, I lost it and walk away from it. But if you really want the thing, yeah. I've, every time I've done that, it's, it's, I've had really good luck. I'm just yeah. like, it's, it's probably there. If you really, if it's worth enough for you to take the time to go back and get the thing, you're probably going to find it. Yes. I Unless it's in your garage, then you'll never find it. Then it's gone. Yeah. Forget <laughs> it's gone. It. It's been swallowed up every time. All right. On, well, on that note. Yeah. 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 I'll see you. I'll Thank see you me. next week. Have a good week. Have a nice awesome. weekend. Have yeah, a good show. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Friday healing force of the universe records. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll see. I forget who's coming up this week. Or who's the next interviewer or the interviewee? But I got some good ones in the hopper. I'll get I'll get something good up there for it. It's a secret. But, uh, yeah, distrokid.com backslash hyphenate or backslash VIP backslash hyphenate. I still I swear I'm going to make a new I'm going to record a new uh, a new ad one of these days. Make it well, make it really uh, make viral, it spooky. Randy. Can, can everything needs like to be viral. Specific. Okay. Yeah, make a dance to it. Oh, like wow. a dancing a ad choreographer. Okay. Yeah. For, just so audio some, medium. So all the kids start dancing to your ad and then it'll be huge. Five, five, five dollar foot long. Five, <laughs> five. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're right. That's what I need to do. Yeah. yeah we can do the it. Worst, the worst and then we'll put it up on district kids up on everything. I'll do all the, um, the logic presets yeah. drums all at the same time. Yeah. Let's awesome. go. <laughs> all right. Bruh. 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 See you, bruh. Bruh. Bruh.